standing by for a splashdown of the Polariston crew. And there you can <laughs> see. The promised splash, and then the applause. The Polaris Dawn returning to Earth safe and successful. But it's nothing compared to what this capsule had done out in space. Back at home, we all have a lot of work to do, but from here, Earth sure looks like a perfect world. 263 people had spacewalked before. But this was the first time in history non-professional astronauts had a go. Over five days, the crew tested new slim-fit spacesuits and equipment, plus a new process that fully depressurizes the crew cabin. That sort of technology could be used in future private space missions. 400 miles above the Earth's surface, it wasn't going to be cheap. And this was one of its riskiest treks yet, but not without its entertainment. SpaceX engineer Sarah Gillis playing violin whilst on board. Billionaire Jared Isaacman, who's worth an estimated £1.5 billion, paid for part of the journey, though he hasn't said how much. It's all through his personally financed space exploration program called Polaris. The rest came courtesy of Elon Musk's SpaceX Corporation. That remains the only private company capable of routinely sending humans to and from Earth's orbit. I have to say that I was one of the skeptics in the very beginning, uh, saying, well, this here's a guy who you know made some money and doesn't know anything about rockets, but he quickly surrounded himself by very smart, motivated people and built up this company, and they've innovated things like recovering the first stages of Falcon 9 uh, boosters on a routine basis, which has dramatically dropped launch costs. Uh, their Dragon spacecraft is a uh, state-of-the-art, you know, with the, with the equipment and the avionics and things like that. Dragon SpaceX, Hypergolf sweeps, and unfired ordnance checks, nominal. The mission designed to push the boundaries of what private companies can do in Earth's orbit is complete. There she is. Sadia Chowdhury, Sky News on Earth.